Sophia Builder Wells. This is going to be a Burrows and Badgers batch build. That's a good, didn't it? Um, I would say Happy New Year to you, but by the time this video gets out, it's probably going to be at least the middle of January, if not getting towards the end of January, so it won't be New Year at all by then. Um, so, Happy Year. Oh, sorry, I don't know. Um, right, this video then is going to be a collection of, of builds. I'm not going to build one model at a time during this little series of videos. In fact, I'm going to build two or three, all four, uh, Benfley up my Burrows and Badgers Marsh Village. Um, I don't want them. I want more models on the table. I want them on the table pretty quick. Um, and if I do each one as an individual video, um, it's going to take um, probably six months to get them done. And I don't want to get them done in six months. I'd like to get them done in six weeks. Um, they are all going to be using very similar techniques. I'm going to be using hardboard for bases. Balsa wood for the main construction, XPS foam and, and low density polystyrene for the bases. Each model is going to be used, built and made in a similar kind of way, so I might as well do them all at the same time. Apart from anything else, it's uh, a way to approach batch building a set of things to take up and help me cover kind of um, gluing times. I'm going to cut out a load of bases, stick the polystyrene down a bit. I've got to wait. I might as well do two or three of those all at the same time. So from that point of view, we're going to build three buildings. They're going to look like this. And this. Oh, and, and this. Um, and uh, hopefully get them all onto the table roughly at the same time. So I'm trying to add more houses to Benfield, apart from anything else. Two out of these three are, are going to be houses. Um, because what tends to happen when I build buildings for tables, it's happened time and time again, is I always end up building the featured buildings, usually starting, of course, with a tavern or a pub. Um, but then there are other kind of like important buildings in a town that you end up building, and then you actually don't build enough places where the people, creatures, people, characters who live in that place live. Um, so to make street corners and streets and that kind of thing, I'm building uh, more houses. Um, but one of them is going to be a feature building as well because I'm building uh, a lighthouse come look out, uh, come home for the mayor of Benfliot, the uh, Puffin character. So it's going to be a kind of like towery come affair. With uh, It's going to be a bit more intricate. But that will work quite nicely. I probably could do that as a video by itself, but like I said, I want to get them done all really quickly. So this may well be... Uh, the first series of buildings I get built in 2022. It's definitely going to be one of the first videos I put out in 2022. Um, so thanks for watching. Make sure, please, that you um, click like and subscribe and do all that stuff as we go. And then you'll see the whole build process. And of course, if you want to support this channel, the best way to do that is through my Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Magnathia Builder of Worlds. Uh, April will be the next time we have a competition for me to build scenery for someone because the other thing that's going to be going on while i'm making all of this stuff for burrows and badgers i will probably some stuff for necromunda as well is going to be building the december competition winners build too so from that point of view there's a lot to happen in the next little while i'm going to be making a number of videos concurrently anyway let's get on with this build and uh see where it takes us <sighs> lots of head scratching and drawing to do first well, I've done some of the drawing, but we're going to have a think about it. Anyway, come down here. I'm going to cut up some hardwood. It's going to be really in sky, and I'm going to take a knife. I'm going to cut up the hardwood. It'll be great. You haven't seen me do that ever before. Actually, you probably have. Yeah. Anyway, it'll still be great. It's over here. Okay, first issue then I've got to deal with with these buildings is how they get based. This, I'm um, imagining these two or three buildings, and we've had a conversation about whether this bit here, I want boats to be able to go through underneath that. Um, and I was tempted to not have any base here at all, and that these separate base here and here, so it just sits on the tabletop. The problem with that is it makes the, the building model, the model kind of unstable. So I'm going to go with a base that goes all the way across here and I'll just have to water texture that to go under there. Um, so this is going to provide me with two or three houses, uh, which is quite good. So I've got to work out how big I want my piece of hardboard, cut it um, and start to go from that point of view. And then I'm going to put 
uh, XPS foam. Uh, do the islandy bits. <sighs> this building again is going to have a base go all the way across here because it's going to be standing on piles that are coming out of the water. Um, uh, the, 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 again, this is only one house. We have a platform outside. There are only 2D pictures, so from that point of view, I'm still going to be making it up around the back. And then this is the lighthouse come lookout tower, which is going to need uh, more foam work, uh, landscaping and stones and bits and pieces. That's the first thing. So the first job is to, with my hardboard, cut out hardboard bases um, and work out how big they're going to be, that kind of thing. Slightly chamfer down the edges and stick on any polystyrene that we need. This is not going to be very exciting to watch. So um, I'll just show it to you when it's done. All right. Right, this is what I've got to with uh, bases for my uh, uh, swamp houses. This is two cut out. Interestingly, out of interest, I've kind of like gone for different sides. I've gone for the least warped side. Obviously, with hardboard, going to have to work to make sure they don't warp. I have drawn on here um, what's going to be polystyrene, what's going to be XPS foam here, and on this bit as well, one bit here, one bit here. And this was going to be the base for the lighthouse, but I've decided that's too thin that way. So I've got another bit of hardboard here, which I'm going to do, put that onto that, cut that out. Then I'm going to start building this up with polystone as well. So that's the next job. Um, obviously then I will have to let the glue go off and let it dry overnight. So what I will probably do is stack it and weight it down to try and make sure that the whole thing stays as flat as possible and we'll uh, get on to dealing with warping boards if we need to but uh, that's the next thing is get out the foam i'm going to use 10 millimeter xps foam i think on this it doesn't have to be very high i don't want the little bits of land to be high up above the water in, in this marsh it needs to be just there, and that's why they're building everything on stilts and everything off it. So they're using that that, uh, that island there to um, provide a bit of solidity to their base, a bit of kind of um, to build a bit of foundation for the base of the house, but then build it off. Um, so they don't have to be very high. I want the buildings to look like they're under threat of flooding, a really high tides. Um, so that's what we're going to do there. Okay, so this is now progress on the three islands. Uh, the two lower ones have been mod podged with black acrylic in it, and then I've covered them in sand, uh, coral sand stuff used for budgie cages. Haven't done that with the third one yet because I have added the higher level, this second layer of XPS foam here. Um, it is going to cause me a few problems with how big the lowest, the first floor that the lighthouse is going to be. Uh, and I've come to terms with the fact that some of it might overhang the edge of the island, which is cool because I want it to be a fairly rickety structure. But what it will do is give me extra height on the model. And one of the things is I want this to be um, 8, 10 inches or so tall, taller than everything else in the village. Or if I use it out in the marsh, that kind of thing would be quite cool. So um, I can't do anything else with that at the minute. I've, I've done all the stone texture. I've done the stone, the bricks. Now the, the, the kind of like the, the stone stairs going down into the water. But this now has to fully go off. It's going to be well, it's nearly midnight now. It's, this is going to be won't be dry and usable till tomorrow. And then I can take my hot wand and carve that down. Put more brickwork in here to support the chimney and then I'll be able to get on with making the lighthouse tower kind of thing. But so what I'm going to do in the meantime then is get crack on with these two items. We'll start my first of all with this one. Um, now in the original picture you can see that it looks like it's kind of one house um, over two little bits of, of kind of like marsh that are sticking up. But I actually decided it's probably going to be being three dwellings. Um, going to have a walkway across this way out the front. Still have the uh, the bit the cut through there, but that middle section in the picture, I think I'm going to have a, a balcony outside the front of, and it'll be kind of like a birdhouse 
Um, and then this house at this end will be a fairly small dwelling and a slightly larger dwelling over here. So it becomes part of a street in Benfliot, as, as, as the way streets go. And I'm going to try and make it a bit run down and a bit crappy. I think is my plan. So what I'm going to do first of all is I want to put balsa wood um, platforms on both islands. Uh, and they are going to be what I build the houses on. And they'll also be the jetties outside. Now, in fact, the first thing I want to do then before I do that is actually paint the islands. Not the top bit, because that's going to have bolsters stuck down to it. But all the banks of the island, I need to paint Mournfang Brown and then dry brush with XV88. Purely because I won't be able to get into it after I've put all the uh, woodwork on. And I'll know that it ain't painted. So from that point of view, I'm going to do a quick uh, two-layer paint job on that. And I'll also do the same on this one although i'm not going to tackle so i've got to tackle this till i put the wooden platforms on here this one doesn't have wooden platforms on the island so the whole thing needs painting because this one is the one in this picture which as you can see has got the kind of upright piles that are going to support a platform up here so there's an under side to the platform which might make an interesting environment in one game or another I might be overthinking this too much. Benfiot might be getting way more complicated than it needs to be. But I want it to look really, really cool and all the buildings to be interesting. Um, and again, this may well be part of the run down end of town. Who knows? It's going to have a slightly higher up walkway, though, so that'll be interesting. Might need ladders or ramps or something else. So, paint the islands first and then get on with the bulk wood work. All right, where's the bloody paint gone? So that's the uh, Mornfang Brown base coat on these two island parts, but uh, you can see it's still wet, so I'm going to have to do something else in the meantime. Um, and what the meantime is going to be filled with is going to be working out a bolt wood. There are loads of different materials that people use, and I'm a bluff old traditionalist, so for those of you who haven't watched my videos before, you won't necessarily know about my love affair with bolts of wood. Uh, a soft, hardwood that's actually wood. Sometimes I'm not quite sure about seeing the point of um, making wood effects in foam when you can actually just use wood. So I'm using balsa here. The balsa I'm using for the floorboards and the jetties is, what's that? It's about three millimeter, I think. Yeah, three millimeters thick. Um, comes in this planks that are 10 centimeters wide nearly four inches um, and uh, I normally buy mine from local model railway shops um, because it's cheaper than going to places like Hobbycraft where they charge stupid amounts of money uh, sometimes three to four times cheaper in fact so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out obviously this I, I want a, a piece of wood uh, I want a wooden platform that's going to go over this island and over both sides which is more than the width of this so it's going to need a uh, some and a bit um, approximately six inches long and approximately well, almost as much as six inches wide as well and then what I do is I draw I've got the odd bit here cut out already what I do is I, to exaggerate the woodness of the whole thing I cut I draw planks in and uh, score in with a biro or a pencil various worn bits of wood as well. So I'm going to do that over the whole thing. Bolts is nice and easy to cut with a sharp knife, especially if you're cutting along the grain. So from that point of view, this shouldn't take too long. I'm aiming to get a wooden platform over here, which will provide the floor for the building, and then probably uh, some planking going in different directions for the jetties outside. And then a wooden platform to go over this island with uh, some form of kind of like jetty at this end as well um, making sure I've got as much room through here as I can to get the odd rowing boat or whatever underneath and through that gap uh, I just like the idea of it being a kind of like a water filled alley really um, so that's what we're going to do let's have a go and see what we can do cutting this stuff out so that's a Mornfang Brown undercoat and an XV88 uh, dry brush and now I'm just going to dry brush Zandri dust on top of that uh, in places um, and then I'm going to be ready to start adding my balsa wood 
uh, floorboards and jetties and things to this model um, so I've got the kind of underside of this painted so everything gets detailed I didn't bother painting these bits because they are going to have balsa wood stuck right down to them so they no danger of them being seen that would be a total waste of paint so uh, so Andrew Dust then just oh arseholes um, gives that kind of light light kind of highlights nice highlight um, most of this is going to be totally lost and you'll never ever see it unless I manage to get some really cool angles when I'm taking photographs of course people who, who play on this terrain you know uh, guys who come and play in uh, the campaign weekends I'm going to run uh, you might get close enough to see it but um, you know mere mortals from around the world who are only seeing this on video unless I like I said find a very weird angle you're not going to see it but you are going to have the satisfaction of knowing that underneath all that model the river bank the swamp and marsh bits of land are painted as well you know just from a sake of completeness point of view it's going to be the kind of thing that you yeah, know that's going to be right and proper none of this cheap cutting corners with me none of that kind of nonsense oh no um, dry brushy dry brushy get that sandry dust on okay um, do the other one here it is do exactly the same thing with this this one is more important we are going to see more of this um, oh, this is going to be visible as the under side of my um, dwelling poor beasties dwelling don't know what kind of beastie but I haven't worked that bit out uh, but there might be a bit of flock to go on this as well actually Easy. Look at that. Sand. Black sealer. Sand. Hornfang brown. XV88. Zandry dust. Job done. It looks alright. Happy with that. I'm not adding water effects to this and um, filler to make the water until I've got all the uprights in and bits and pieces. But right. But I am now ready to get on with the polish the uh, balsa wood work. Um, not that I've done any for this but I have made balsa work for this set of islands let's zoom out that bit Whoop. I have made the balsa work for this set of pair of islands so far and um, I'm quite pleased with this so we've got one bit that's going to sit there-ish and another bit that's going to sit there-ish making jetties on both sides and then there's cut out like that because I wanted the wood on this bit to run in the other direction. Planks to run lengthwise. Uh, is that the way around? No. Okay, so this is now going to be the uh, floor, the roof, and the jetties for one building. What I now need to do is under here these jetties are going to need supports so I'm going to use round balsa section cut and stick that or actually have a few bits sticking up so they get support there and I've also cut this one out to go over here to make one on this side and again a jetty that's going to go on the end like that um, so uh, there we are I'm going to have the water go through here building 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 going to look lovely I think Maybe, possibly. Who knows? Well, that's what we're going for. So they're going to be in place. On, yeah, I need to put cut um, round bolster section. Or maybe square bolster section, but quite small. Here we go. That's actually about... That's probably about 8mm bolster section. I'm going to cut little round bits, little piles, that will go underneath and hold the jetty up. And in some cases, they're going to come up I'll cut out through the jetty so they kind of like support and they also give uh, uh, high taller piles that you could tie boats up to and that kind of thing. So that's the next mission. When I've got that done, I'll get this cut out and stuck in place. I can then stick the floors on. Um, 
and then I could start to work out what the buildings, how the building is actually going to work compared to that illustration that I did in the first place, um, which is, uh, uh, yeah, apparently, okay, so this is, <laughs> I just read the label, six millimetre balsa wood. It would need a little bit of trimming down because it's really round at me. I don't want to be completely round, but that's not bad. So, yeah, I'm going to cut little lengths. Um, well, I know this polystyrene is only 10 millimetres tall, so 10 mil bits and other bits, and uh, we're going to stick that on. That is the next mission. All right. Right, island process then. B&B &B island process. What's the word? Progress. Right, so we've got two so far. So now, this island is ready to have uh, its uh, piles and uprights put in so I can raise a building above it. This island has now got its two um, lower levels on it, wooden wood on it, jetties. The building is going to go kind of like on here. I have jetties pretty much all the way around this one. And another building here, and then, of course, one in between the two. So that's ready to have uh, water texture added, uh, which has got a core quite a lot. This is, like I said, it's going to be really difficult to see inside or underneath this whether it was worthwhile doing. But I could probably do with propping up this end with a, a pile there. But otherwise, uh, that's looking pretty good. That's to use my standard kind of way of working with balsa wood, scoring wood effect into the balsa with uh, a pencil. Uh, planking and nail heads, that kind of thing. That's all pretty nice. I, like, I love that effect. It's enough just to get um, make it easy to paint. So I've got to get on with these two. And here is the uh, the desert island. Uh, desert island. This is the lighthouse uh, base now. Um, steps and a little stone quayside and a little bit of rock sticking up out of the marsh. Not much. Uh, chimney support cutting this end here, I don't know how well we can see that there because it's black on black, it's like um, something from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and I'm going to have to actually build out on this, I'm dumping the idea of the stone lower floor for this building because apart from anything else, <laughs> there's not enough to support it over here the profile of this is very weird shape so it's going to have to have a square floor which is cool because it'll have sticky out supports out coming out from the rock made of wood holding up the floor, um, bracing it, which is going to be great because that's going to become a feature of some other models that I make later this year. So it'll be give me a chance to try that out. Um, so first floor, and now I need to get on with that. So it's actually starting to build the buildings now. The islands are coming on quite nicely. So this is the um, poorer end of town and then the lighthouse out in the swamp on the edge of town getting made, which is going to be quite cool. It's going to give me more options while I'm building. And what I might also do while I'm making this stuff is actually make some more wooden walkways and jetties. You can't have too many, really. Um, I've got a design for a bridge and a couple of other bits and pieces, some kind of arching bridges uh, to allow boats to pass under through. So that's what we're going to get on with. Um, I can't decide. I think I'm going to do actually start to put the upright piles on this next go from there i need a figure or two from the bnb &B range to give me an idea how big it needs to be i don't really think it's going to be big enough for large or massive creatures to get necessarily underneath this building but certainly the small and medium ones like rats and the like i want them to be able to stand upright completely underneath the lower level of the house um, so that's what i've got to work out next so, I need some more of this 6mm round bolster section, I think, is what I'm going to use. Well, it might be quite good in, in square section. Um, I'll have to see what I can find. Right, so I've found some square section bolster. Different thicknesses. Um, what's that? That looks like about 6mm. This is 6mm balsa, which I want to do the uprights on this island with. The problem is, is I haven't got enough. Um, so, I could cut all those, but in the meantime, what I thought I'd do is get on with uh, the lighthouse. Now, what I've done is 
I like this. I've I've cut a flaw with um, slopey off bit because that's going to go here at the top of this staircase, and so the, the tail starts to hang over the edge of the rock a little bit, and it certainly does back here. There's loads of it hanging over. I'm making sure there's plenty of room here that I can going to build chimney up up here. Um, but I want a, a, a joist to hold up the this corner of the building here. So I've taken this um, square section. What's that? That's got to be 10 mils. Yeah, 10 mil square section. Carved it down a little bit. Now the cool thing is, is what I've done is I've cut into the styrene so it'll bed in firmly and I'm trying to level it off. So I'll end up with a joist coming out of the rock holding up the corner of the building and what I'm then going to do is I'm probably going to backfill this with filler uh, to hold it all in place and to fill in the rock that I've carved out because I've completely carved out um, this bit of rock here which I totally didn't need to is totally in the wrong place oops so I've worked this uh, joist back further and further into the rock face and now I'm going to fill that up with filler there uh, and I think that worked quite nicely because then I'll get this kind of like rock that's been uh, the, the wooden joist has been rammed down cut into they've chipped away at the rock got this wooden joist in there and that's supporting the corner of the lighthouse the lighthouse is going to be the wackiest build i think in benfield um sometimes my my fantasy builds i think are quite sensible and grown up and look almost kind of realistic and i'm, I'm hoping that this uh lighthouse is going to have a little bit more whimsy don't know but i'm so i'm starting off with this kind of like floor that doesn't fit in this joist that's a good place to start then i'm going to build the first floor which is going to need um uprights in the corners and uh walls with the old window and bits and pieces put in it we'll see how we go so yeah this is it's the bit this is exciting one i probably could have made just this lighthouse in its own video in its own right um but uh yeah you never know i might shoot it all over again <laughs> And do all these as different model videos. Pfft, who knows? <laughs> so the nice thing about working with XPS Foam, of course, is you can cut right into it. Uh, what I've done is I've cut in. I don't know how well we can see this. Here is a hole where I'm sticking my finger. Look into the into the XPS Foam. I've cut into there because I'm putting this wooden joist in. That's going to support the floor joist of the um, uh, lighthouse. Although it needs to be a little bit shorter. Or I could cut out more foam. I cut out about as much foam as I'm going to get. So I'm going to cut this down a little bit more. Cutting it down a tiny bit at a time. Because I can't uncut it of course. And then fitting it back to the model. Seeing how that works with the root floor in place. Um, that's pretty good. Bit of a bend in it. Just a tiny fraction cut off more. I could stick that now. I'm pretty confident I could stick that in place. So what I'll do is I'll uh, put some glue in there. And uh, put some weight on it. Like a mug. Mug. And I'll let that go off overnight. And that'll hold that in place. That'll do quite nicely. Yeah. Let's do that. Right, so that's uh, Gorilla Wood glue in there. And um, this isn't stuck on the floor. I haven't stuck on. Uh, the floor's not stuck on. It's just placed on top of the joist, so it's going to hold it in place. Now, uh, taking a heavy weight, a weight heavier that's heavy enough, like this classy Back to the Future flux capacity mug that I got for Christmas, that's going to sit there. Whoop. hold that in place overnight and then when that's glued in place and that'll be tomorrow um, I'll be able to get some of my polyfiller filling around there around that bit of rock face and then I'll have that joist coming right out of the rock it's gonna look really cool um, and that'll be nice good stuff I need to start thinking about what the rest is gonna look like um, which way the boards are gonna go more than anything else uh, do they go ship lap which is very common uh, on old traditional buildings in this neck of the woods, uh, or whether they go upright. It doesn't make a great deal of difference which way they go. 
um, shiplap horizontal planking might be better uh, and will look different to a lot of the other buildings that I made where I'm sure they've got vertical planks. Well, let's go and look at some of the other Binfield buildings because I'd like to make something that's different. Um, and this, yeah, I want it to be different because it's going to be a little bit away from the village maybe or out. sometimes I can use it out in the marsh, that kind of thing. But a bit more whimsy on this model. It's good. Okay, went to my local model shop today. Uh, well, one of the closest ones. Uh, active scale models in Hockley. Because uh, I needed more bolts wood. And uh, absolutely awesome. I totally, totally think you should try and support your local hobby shops if you get a chance. And this is what their rag of balsa wood looks like. Check it out. Ah! That's what a proper model shop can do. The other things can't have been able to stand there in the shop and pick it by hand. It's cool. And also, when it boils down to it, it's kind of like sensible prices. This piece, here we go. Um, let's zoom out for a minute if we can. What's that? That's, I don't know. Um... Probably same thing. This 91 centimeter piece of six millimeter square section balsa wood, which is perfect for this model, 75 pence. Proper prices in a proper model shop. Um, thank you, Active Scale uh, Models in Hockley. Um, you probably won't see this video. Oh, I'm going to tag you in it, uh, and uh, on my Facebook page too. So I hope you see it from that point of view. Um, absolutely brilliant, great service, nice blokes. Um, and uh, exactly the products that you'll want. Proper model making materials. Fantastic. Anyway, I'm now cutting out two inch tall piles to go on this island here. Some are going to be sunk into the island. Um, so I'm now cutting out two inch tall piles that are going to support the main platform. Two inches, it's not going to be big enough for massive creatures to get underneath. But smaller creatures will still be able to get underneath this uh, which is going to be quite neat and then there'll be a deck above it and that's where the building's going to go above it's going to give me a different and interesting kind of like look compared to um some of the other models uh in benfield which is going to be quite cool i want some of them to be raised up out of the water um and higher up platforms for people to walk around on. so not everything is all down at just off water level which is going to be neat so i'm taking each square section two inch piece and trimming off the sides and edges and round them up and making them look a bit more woody um i'm using proper wood to make wood as opposed to lots of people i see online who use xps foam to make wood which just never really seems to make sense to me um this stuff is tougher for a start um and it's kind of woody uh but that's what we're doing so i'm going to make the six i'm going to make the, the two inch uprights all around um and then that's going to have a um, beam put across the top of them like a goal post and that will then have um, cross supports trusses, I don't know what they're called uh, I know I've got friends who will tell me what they're called but I don't care um, and they're going to go on as well when that's done that will be I think the end of this part of the build each of the three islands will be at the stage where they are ready to take a building um Although, of course, I've got to add the water effects, but uh, we'll see how we go. Let's do that then. So I'm cutting, at this end of the model, I'm actually cutting holes into the styrene and sticking um, the piles, the wooden piles, into the styrene. Um, that way there, they'll all be roughly the same height. I want to try and get a kind of ramshackle look with this model. I'm not quite sure how to achieve it. The problem that uh, my models end up with is the fact they always look quite nice and neat. So, <laughs> which, you know, it doesn't have to be a criticism, but it kind of like is. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure how to achieve ramshackle or knackered looking, uh, bar weathering all the woodwork. Um, although I might have some bits of, I might lower the odd pile so we have wood. I don't know how to do that. Uh, hmm. Because what's going to happen is it's all going to be really nice. It's going to be lovely, uh, which is great. And it's all going to be the same height and that kind of thing. But I then want saggy wooden boards. I think I might just do it with, with knackered and over-weathered boards and that kind of thing. But some could be a bit lower. I'd love some of it to be dropping. A bit like Lake Town is in, in Lord of the Rings. and Not Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. A bit like Lake Town in The Hobbit, which is kind of like seen better days. And it's all wonky and kind of like falling over. 
I like this to be a bit wonky. And I'm just too precise with everything I can like make. Um, oh yeah, let's keep going. Let's see what happens. So I'm using my two inch piles to act as a measure. Um, I'm laying them down in between, one in between there. And that's giving me a two inch gap. Which is enough room to get most figures through, which is quite cool. It should be enough room to get your fingers in. Although I think I am going to make this model so the roof will come off so you can play underneath. Maybe, possibly. Yet again, Tim overthinks it and over-engineers it, but, you know, it might be quite cool. So now I've measured my two-inch gap there. i stick my scalpel in all around through the sand coating. It's not too tricky. It's a brand-new scalpel, mind you. It gives me a nice little square section, which I can lever out. None of these are stuck in yet. They're just... Squished into the polystyrene. There we go. There goes that. Break up a bit more of the polystyrene inside. And then take my pile, stick it into the hole. Might be slightly different height. That's coming on, look. <clears throat> I'm not going to put one under here because I want boats to be able to run in and out. I've got a boat somewhere. Um, there we are. I want to be able to get rowing boats in underneath easily, although there could be a pile there. I'm not going to have one at the end supporting it because I won't be able to get boats in between two inch gaps. So I'm going to make this bit here all two inch by two inch. I'll have a two inch one there, but I think then this is going to be a bigger gap here. So, and bigger over here, made by thicker, heavier piles. That way. Be more interesting to look at and um, easy to play with. Look at that, that's cool. Now, if I've done this properly, that should be a two inch fit in there as well. Just not ah, cool. Well, there you go. That's one of the ways I'm going to do this. It's going to work by the fact that it's not entirely square for starters. That's good. I don't care. I don't want it to be entirely square, but it's not far off. Two inches all around. I really am now waffling to myself. Okay, so I glued this. <laughs> I'm trying to kind of like get that there, and it's totally not square. Look, there's loads of wood hanging over the edge here, uh, and it's not even close to being straight there. So I might have to unpeel one of these bits. I mean, it doesn't matter too much because I want it to be a bit wonky. But there's a bit of me that's greatly affronted by the fact that I messed it up again. Um, but here's me cutting in joins and joists and things so it all kind of like fits together properly it's kind of scary i'm getting a bit worried about myself and how kind of obsessive i'm getting about this stuff yeah oh well can't be helped right so here's my wooden frame that i'm going to build the house on that's cool it's going to take um the uh, uh the dwelling that goes on top of this my original drawing had a set of stairs on it so we can have a platform on them Go down the other side. But I actually haven't made the base big enough. Ah! I have put a small set of stairs on this side. Hopefully, without doing any measuring at all, this bottom platform will line up with some of the uh, wooden jetties and stuff I've got. So then this will come up um, and make... Uh, um, we'll go jetty and then staircase up onto the wooden walkway around the outside of this and then maybe down the other side as well we'll have to see um, it's not great it's one of those compromised staircases it's quite steep won't be putting any figures on it but it's enough to make that it show that it's a staircase which is quite cool staircases on war gaming models are always problematic do you make them look super realistic or do you make them playable well this one probably is going to be neither this 30 millimeter based figure only just about stands on it. The bottom rung, so that'll probably do. Bigger figures. This 40 millimeter based figure uh, totally isn't getting there, and the 50 mil ones won't either. But if there's a jetty here, and then get on there and go up the stairs, that'd be cool. I'll live with that. Now, I've got all my framework put in place, including wonky joists and bits and pieces. All three of my um wooden all three of my island structures the actual marsh bit is done now i'm going to put water texture on underneath there 
on all three and then they will be uh, ready to actually have buildings applied. All this time making these three islands haven't actually got close to putting a building together yet. But it's going to look pretty cool. They're going to be interesting additions to the village because of the height and their arrangements and various other bits and pieces. So well worth spending the time doing it. Uh, they're going to look pretty neat. But um, yeah, fiddly. <laughs> Oh, sorry for the water on this. I'm using multi purpose polyfiller. I'm applying it thick and then using a paintbrush uh, with, uh, to water it down and to smooth it out to put all the water around the base of my little islands. I'll do the same with all three and then that will um, paint up nicely. I'll, uh, when it's dry, prime it with Mod Podge and black acrylic like I did the actual model. And then that way there it will seal it nicely, give me a decent surface to paint. Easy peasy. And there we go, look, coming up nice. So do that on all three of the little islands. And then we're ready to build buildings, people. Okay, so I think I've got to the uh, natural ending point for video one of this um, batch build as it was actually the interesting thing is, is i've been going along i'm sitting there thinking yeah you know what i probably could have done two different videos out of this maybe building three different things all at the same time is a bit ambitious but i like to do kind of different things for this channel so um doing that uh is is i'm still going to go with that each of the models then uh, has got to the point where the um bit that goes on the table the base part of it is done I have made the island, I've added the water, and I've added woodwork uh, in one way or another to take uh, platforms or start making the buildings. None of these have actually got a building on yet. They're just the kind of like the foundation, the island, the bit that comes out of the marsh. So what do we have? Well, we've got um, the single dwelling with the high platform. Here you go. Um, water underneath. This is all going to be marshy and all the rest of it. I've sunk a uh, a load of planks onto this marsh bit here. We've added the staircase at the back. We've got this nice framework, which I might end up putting some cross joints. Certainly had that in the original illustration. They were nice and curvy too. I don't know if I could be bothered to do that, to be quite honest. But that's going to have one building on it. And while I've been thinking about this, I'm pretty sure I'm going to change the design from the original picture as to what the building's going to look like. I fancy a different kind of roof. We'll have to see how we go with that. Um, but I want these to look like they're at the rough end of town. So um, this may well take some more weathering and bits and pieces. This then is the base for um, the second building, which is going to have actually going to be three houses in one. When I drew it, it wasn't that. It was all one house. My original uh, inspiration for it was a house I kept driving past uh, when I was doing a whole load of work at Halloween. Um, I drove, kept driving by this one house which had an up and over thing over its kind of like uh, driveway and it drove through that into its backyard and I liked the room over it and a bit over here and a bit over here but actually I quite like the idea because I'm trying to populate a town if you like of having several dwellings all in one block which make up then part of a a water swampy street um so this is going to have um it's the way around it is in the picture there'll be a house on here there'll be a, a kind of weird looking long house on this bit of island and a bit that joins them up in the middle which is going to be a, a bird's house because it'll have a perch out the front and that kind of thing um and the only access to it will be uh from the balcony kind of thing it might be a ladder up that way i don't have to have the all three things interconnecting um, although they will of course come apart there will be uh, walkways front and back here getting across maybe the house will probably sit in the middle and over here there's going to be this one here so this is going to be quite nice got space for the uh, boat to go through the middle underneath the arches nice so that's going to be a set of buildings and by the time I put this one together with this one that will make quite a nice kind of street kind of feel in one part of Benfield, which is quite cool. Give me lots more options on the table, and as I expand it, uh, I'll do more along those lines there. And then, of course, there's this bad boy, which is the um, base for a lighthouse. This I have in mind to be um, the Puffin Mayor's home, um, but, you know, we've got this nice stone key at this end, 
the only big bit of rock really sticking up out of the swamp base of the chimney this wooden support that's rammed down pile pile that's gone into the stone there because that's going to support the wooden floor of the whoop, the ground floor of the lighthouse now with this model of course the drawing is not particularly realistic looking um there yeah, have a look check it out that's what it reminds yourself of it and i'm probably going to go even more with that i, I like the idea of this being a a more whimsical building in this kind of like whole setup the rest of my buildings are all very sensible and, and, and proper uh, and i quite like this one being a bit kind of odd although well we'll see how we go um it's quite nice so those are the three bits i was tempted like i said to make the rest of this as a complete video by itself you never know i might even still do that we'll have to see how we go with the building and the filming when i get into making the buildings it gets a bit more um uh focused on that building you get a bit more kind of like uh, uh, intent on sticking to one building so i might end up filming all the stuff to build this and that might be a video so I'm like, who knows that's half the fun of doing this kind of stuff but you'll have to make sure uh that you come back and watch the next bit of the burrows and badgers buildings batch build yeah say that in a hurry um if you uh, uh want to add comments and, and tell me about what you think i've done so far then make sure you do so down below give this video a like share it with your mates your gaming buddies and anybody else you think will be uh, impressed if you want to see how these buildings turn out of course make sure you click subscribe and if you want to support this channel more then do please go check out patreon.com slash magrathia builder worlds and for the price of a cup of coffee you could help me out while i run this here channel uh, because i have to buy my own car like bits and pieces unlike some dude who i watched making an amazing lord of the rings board recently with a pallet load of stuff from woodland scenics not jealous at all um although he's got a gajillion followers so yeah fair play to him you know he's obviously worked very hard and there's an amazing piece of terrain but i have to look at those things anybody could do it if you get all that freebie stuff um i don't want freebie stuff cup of coffee and for the price of that you stand a chance of winning magrathia build world scenery made specifically for you so if you want to see how this turns out make sure you're watching if you don't want to see how this turns out hey no bollocks make sure you're watching come back and see me next time on magrathia build world i'll see you again